Hello and welcome to the Director's Voice, a video podcast brought to you by FERA, the Federation of European Screen Directors. We are so proud to present this series of dialogues between filmmakers discussing their craft and their role in today's changing European audiovisual industry. In today's episode, director Clement Dvornik interviews Agnieszka Holland about her films, her impressive career and her steadfast commitment to filmmakers' rights and European cinema. As a side note, Agnieszka is our honorary president and Clemen is our chair of the board. Listen in their conversation and find out what Agnieszka Holland has to say about the ongoing changes in the European film sector. Hi Agnieszka, how are you today? Hi Clemen, I'm fine, thank you. In Warsaw this time. Yeah. Are you in between or in production? In between um, productions? I'm I'm not in 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 production. I was last time before the COVID started, okay. and uh, since um, uh, then I was in the middle of the production, which was stopped by uh, by the COVID. Uh, and uh, since um, I don't have something which is ready to go, I I'm working on uh, two even three scripts, and I hope that drink this year and the beginning of next year probably will come to some uh, to some um, uh, solution but um, i have to tell that the situation um, uh, of course is complicated for the cinema and financing and um, but it is also complicated um, from the point of view of the of the subject i would like to approach because i think that we are facing incredible and quite dangerous change in the society and in the world. In different uh, countries, in my country, Poland, it is um, it is very negative, I think, what's going on and, and dangerous from the point of view of the democracy, but also human rights and um, and also the, the freedom of the, of the um, freedom of expression. Um, so um, the uh, activism and some kind of the fight for preservation of the rights Uh, is what takes uh, quite a lot of my um, energy, especially mental energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would like to to make the movie which is um, which is somehow rooted in the contemporary feelings and problems. And um, as you know, it's the most difficult to find the subject which is in the same time very you know specific and very universal. So I'm, you know, working on on the preparation of something like that. So, uh, as probably all filmmakers feel right now, um, how do you see that uh, the themes, the pre-COVID themes, are now a little bit expired, and that uh, basically filmmaking is uh, really uh, developing in this new direction, and people. Uh, uh, because the world changed drastically in this uh, uh, pandemic uh, y- two years. Uh, do you feel that themes would really uh, expand in totally different direction in a post-COVID well, world? I think that um, uh, several challenges and several dangers and several you know, problems of the modernity have been present very strongly in, before COVID and that the change, like change of the mentality and change of, 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 um, of the, you know, of some kind of the revolutionary change in many, many, many um, aspects um, started before. Um, COVID in some way accelerated it and in some way uh, froze it. So um, we are quite confused now, you know, because when you try to solve the um, epidemic situation and globally it's very difficult because, you know, we know that even if um, the rich countries um, um, can be vaccinated practically entirely, um, the poor countries are not. And um, so, you know, we, we, we see the uh, division in the world and, the, you know, exclusions but in much more visible and brutal way. Uh, and somehow we also see that um, when we exclude the poor, like you know, part of Asia, Africa, and Middle East, and so, uh, 
we are not safe anyway because this virus will come from them to us and um, and um, uh, modified will attack us again and um, so uh, it is like it is very symbolic it's what's going on and show to us in one way that we are global and our problems are global like you know um, climate crisis and um, uh, and um, eco ecological disaster and uh, and you know virus uh, this one or we can expect even much more dangerous one or many uh, can be solved only when we are solidary and globally are facing those uh, those um, challenges but in the same time the catastrophe like um, uh, like um, uh, epidemic catastrophe or um, or climate catastrophe uh, is um, re reinforcing populistic uh, populistic politicians and um, and push people to close in some kind of the safe um, behind the safe borders it means uh, it's like some kind of the um, illusion that you can be safe <coughs> if you if you are um, if you are egoist if you are close in your you know in your safe um, uh, safe zone in your comfort zone uh, but you you cannot you cannot you cannot stop the climate changes by the borders and you cannot stop the virus by the borders uh, if you don't want to, to freeze entirely all economy uh, so we, we are living this paradox, and this paradox, you know, um, creates a big conflict and uh, can be the ground for the very, you know, bloody conflicts and can uh, totally change our totally change our civilization. So um, and I can see it in Poland now um, when um, um, Lukashenko, Belarusian uh, di dictator, uh, decided to make some kind of the hybrid, hybrid war against uh, the border countries, which are supporting Belarusian opposition, by the way, uh, and um, is um, sending, is pushing and sending uh, the thousands of um, uh, migrants and refugees. Uh, um, uh, who, who travel to Belarusia um, under the fake uh, illusion that they can easily come uh, to the European uh, Union um, through those borders, and now they are they are um, they are trapped because the Belarusians are pushing them um, through the border to Poland, and Poles, for example, are pushing them back. Um, they are dying. They are, you know, they are dying. It means it's already mm, six dead people, which we know about, and probably much more. We don't know because um, the, the re Polish regime, which um, competes with um, Lukashenko's regime, um, uh, made the, some kind of the martial law and uh, uh, and closed the access to the to the borders. Not only for um, for the politicians of the opposition, also for the um, um, human um, um, uh, NGOs uh, and um, and also for the media. Uh, and uh, the the images um, I, I I can see are terrible, and um, they are doing. The government is doing um, really some kind of the fascist propaganda presenting those poor people who are trapped and who are dying and there are many children there as well um, as a pedophiles, uh, zoophiles, uh, terrorists and so uh, so um, and that is only you know several dozens, thousand people we, which can come, it means not millions and imagine what will happen and you know what is what is the most depressing it is that the European Union somehow is supporting this. They are pretty happy, I think, that the stupid Poles and, you know, fascist Poles are solving the problem and um, um, making their conscience dirty uh, by blocking, you know, the, the European Union borders. And as I said, it's only few dozens, um, thousands of, um, of, um, of the people, but um, we can expect in next years uh, millions and millions. 
because yeah. when um, the the, the um, climate um, crisis is is growing much faster than we expected, the temperature is also uh, changing uh, much faster, and um, in few years we'll have uh, the millions of people escaping Africa and another. Um, hot countries because it will be impossible to live there it will be they will be going toward toward the north and i'm pretty sure watching what's going on now on this on this little you know little um, example of the you know what can come uh, that um, they will be massacred by the officially massacred by by western governments and in this moment when we start to bomb and shoot um, the refugees on the um, Mediterranean and in other places. Uh, I think that the Europe we tried to construct after the Second War, it means a solidary, democratic um, country of the law and judiciary with the human rights, which are very important aspect of that, and um, equality, fraternity and um, freedom, it's over. It means we cannot be the murderers and in the same time to have this um, safe heaven, it's impossible. Yeah. How do you feel the uh, uh, role of director as uh, homo politicus uh, uh, fits in this new situation or uh, situation at large in, in the contemporary society? Maybe... Uh, Talk in the, about this relationship that you. How, how do you feel the relationship uh, of uh, of director when uh, we uh, work uh, speak through our films uh, uh, and uh, when we uh, how we as a political uh, uh, citizens also uh, work in, in in society uh, beyond our films. Well, you know, I, I don't think that as a filmmaker or as an artist, you have the obligation to be openly political. It means um, um, the, 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 the space of art or the space of the cinema is um, much wider and much deeper somehow. Uh, but in the same time, when you see um, the things um, so dramatic or tragic, um, as I was describing to you a few minutes ago, I think to... Um, to to completely neglect it or forget it um, when you are doing your work or you are or or when you are taking publicly the stand as a filmmaker, uh, it is some kind of the escape. It is the escapism. It means I think that you have the situations when um, when you have to to raise the voice. And to um, another thing is to express this in the you know in your cinema. In which way, you know, sometimes you have the movies which are not openly political or apparently even not at all, but are in very deep way are expressing some, you know, some some confusion or some problems or some dramas of the of the of the contemporary society uh, in the way which is in the same time revelatory and attractive. And I, I'm, I'm for this kind of the cinema for sure. And I am a bit tired when in the situation we are living now, the 80% or 90% of the movies are exactly the same like 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And they are nice, elegant, uh, personal, little, um, little bourgeois, you know, um, in, uh, movies. But you have also the movies which are touching, you know, the nerve of... Um, of um, of our uh, of our lives and um, I I haven't seen yet the films from Venice and um, Cannes, uh, 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 but um, I heard that that they are really you know like that they have something really very strong. And I uh, and I watched a lot of documentaries this year and I have to say that the documentaries are certainly very political, even those who, which are not like openly political, they are, you know, they are, they are very, you know, uh, commentating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are comment, uh, comment, uh, commentary for a uh, contemporary society in a way. Yes. And yeah. the, 
so I think that the documentary will a bit like you know um, the uh, documentary books and the reportages um, uh, was taking over the fictional fictional um, literature and somehow are more relevant and more popular quite often. Um, I think that the, the little same thing is going with the documentary cinema, uh, but of course you know they are not entertaining. Mostly they are pretty, pretty you know difficult to watch because the reality they are they are portraying it's uh, it's really difficult. But um, one film I don't know if you know the, the Danish film Flea. Uh, no. It is an, an animation documentary about the Afghan yeah. refugee story of the Afghan refugee. Uh, and um, it's extremely efficient. It's like, I think, very beautiful, very honest, um, quite revelatory. Um, but it is, uh, it is very, very efficient artistically and in terms of the, you know, of the, how it goes into your mind to the people even which are not interested in the subject of the kind. So I think that more of the movies like that will uh, will be and more attractive and more uh, accessible they will be for the wider audience. Uh, it is better for the cinema uh, and it is better for the for the audience as well. And um, um, I think that we will be facing now the big crisis of the uh, theatrical distribution. And uh, I think we can... Uh, we can attract the audience um, again to come to the theaters with the really crazy, fantastic, very innovative entertainment and with the very, you know, relevant and very personally courageous um, subjects. That is my, my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you, you personally also, uh, uh, you are really um, active in the field of, uh, be, uh, in the in the uh, as a chair of uh, uh, honorary chair of FERA uh, European Directors and uh, as a as a chair of uh, FI European Film Academy, you you uh, your activity in the field of let's say film politics uh, is is obvious. Uh, uh, can you maybe share with me why why uh, do you feel? Uh, this is really important, uh, and why why did you chose to to stand up for these really important uh, roles uh, in our society? I think that it's important, you know, to unite the filmmakers and on the national level and also on the international level. It gives us um, uh, the in, in, uh, insight into the problems and changes, and you know, and um, and we can be more efficient when working together, and we can feel stronger when working together. We can exchange our experiences, um, technical and um, artistical, but also political, um, in terms of the you know the the culture politics and and the problems in uh, we we are facing with. Um, the producers, and distributors, governments, uh, funds, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, and I think that, which several times I felt um, uh, during the EFA uh, uh, award ceremony, some feeling of belonging of the family, the extended family, you know, and more international it is, more we are closer to some kind of, the, you know, of the... Mm. Filmmakers tribe, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, and also in Poland we created only like ten years ago the, in the Directors Guild, maybe even not ten years it is. It was very you know late and very slow, and now it uh, in this especially in those circumstances political which are very unfriendly and which 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 um, um, everybody has to face uh, some dilemma, you know. Um, uh, Will I be courageous and open and open speaking, uh, or um, or I will just you know stay in my corner and try to do my 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 work, um, making compromises with the censorship, um, and when we are together, we it 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 gives us some you know some. Not only feeling of the of the of, of of the not only some strength, but also 
some distance to the problems you know we can we can discuss it and and also of course the, the problems of the of the filmmaking you know community and the problems of the festivals and the problems of blah 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 different commissions and that that we can solve together it's very difficult to solve it um, when you are when you are alone so all those kind of the organizations if they are democratic and if they are coming from the you know inner need of the filmmakers to unite i think they they are very positive and more it we will be united uh, more difficult it will be to break us yeah uh, in uh, maybe in, in in today's world um fil uh, filmmakers or directors job is changing a little bit and the position in the, the modern production is a little bit shifting um, you have a lot of experience uh, in uh, in cinema and also in television and in television that it's uh, that, uh, in, in Europe for example you you made a short series in, in, in Prague in Czech uh, and you also made uh, this high budget uh, American series maybe can you can you uh, a little bit describe what is the mm, What is the what do you feel is the position of director in in, in modern production? How this uh, uh, how position of director is uh, different when uh, uh, we are talking about uh, European production or maybe cinema production uh, towards the, the 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 productions of big platforms or American cinema? Um, that's pretty like wide you know um, wide problems. Um, it means wide wide subject. Um, it was always the difference between European approach and American approach, Hollywood approach. <coughs> and in American cinema, uh, at least this Hollywood cinema, it was always the cinema of the uh, producers and distributors, big studios or smaller studios. Uh, and the director was um, important, of course, and this, in some moments even the most important, like in the 70s, for example, and, and beginning of 80s of the of the last um, last uh, century, uh, but um, uh, didn't have the entire um, the, the the full control over um, over the work, and very rarely had the final cut. And in Europe, it was opposite. It means it was um, it was the cinema of the directors, and still it is to some extent. Even if the producers try to take over, and with the help of um, the big distribution companies or um, the platforms, it is easy for the producers to take over. Um, in um, in um, uh, but you know in the US till now the film is. Um, Filmed by the director, right? But in the television, is very different. It means the, the screenwriters who've been neglected and you know and pushed into the background for the hundred years uh, are taking the revenge. And in the television and the TV series, uh, which are the most important vehicle now for the audiovisual narration, um, they are much more powerful than the directors. They are quite often creators, producers, uh, showrunners, and uh, they are deciding uh, not only about you know economical aspects, but in the first place, very much about the creative aspects. So um, mostly in the television, the in US, but it starts to 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 go into Europe as well. The director is somebody to hire. It is not really the you know the the, the god of the of the creation. Um, and it will be good, you know, um, when um, the um, uh, uh, production, uh, um, quality production for the television is growing in Europe with the, with the, with the delay of like 10, 15 years behind, we are behind of, of, of Hollywood, you know, uh, in, in this domain, that uh, the director will keep Uh, this control over, you know, the the, the 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 artistic decision to the, of course, to the extent where it's possible, but it will be quite difficult, you know. It will be quite difficult because the platforms internet. We didn't create powerful platforms in Europe. That is, uh, I think, proof of our laziness and lack of the imagination. 
It means we are depend, uh, dependent on, uh, on American uh, platforms, uh, Netflix, HBO, um, Amazon, um, Disney, and so on, and so on, Hulu came to Europe and give us the possibility to, 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 to sell our production, but also to, to produce the, the content, which is uh, in local language even, and has some like local uh, domestic um, uh, qualities. Uh, but they are they are they are they, they they open for the you know for the for the domestic productions but in the same time they want this domestic production to be global uh, it means they are choosing the things which are easy to sell also in another countries or continents uh, which very easily can um, lead us to the disappearance of um, identity of, of local um, of national identity um, culture and culture identity it, it happened in us also you know the us cinema hollywood cinema became the victim of the global success more uh, successful they've been globally less american they've been and several important genres of american cinema like film noir or western or social uh, drama practically disappeared because they are not as attractive for the people in different cultures. Uh, as, is, uh, as is, you know, the, the superhero stories and special effects stories, romantic comedies and so on. Uh, so what we have to preserve in Europe, it is our identity somehow. And it is more difficult now that it was, for example, before COVID, because the economical situation of uh, theatrical distribution is uh, very precarious. Mm, but in the same time, because, um, because the cinema of the middle disappeared in States and the television and quality television took place of that, uh, suddenly, um, more successful and more visible rather become the films which are really independent and really small. And when we see, you know, um, some last um, uh, Oscars, um, it was not the big American, you know, uh, vehicles, uh, not big Hollywood uh, vehicles. It was, um, it was uh, Moonlight, for example, um, or, uh, or um, Korean film uh, Parasites, or in the last year, uh, no, Man's, uh, no Man's Land, um, uh, which is also very independent, um, not only financially, but also in the feeling and in the, you know, in the, in the subject and in the, in the style. So I think we are, we are, we are facing, you know, um, shifting um, of, of some habits and, um, um, it will be good if we will be strong, as you know, and united exactly to to keep um, as much as possible our freedom to fight for for the platforms of the distribution which are curated somehow, not only you know by a, a algorithm but also by by some quality, objective quality, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> What is your personal experience or how do you, uh, as a director in this, uh, let's say, uh, corporate or uh, in, in, the, in the platform environment productions, uh, uh, how do you cope with your position uh, to establish your position? What are your practical uh, things to preserve your voice, uh, to do what you want, what, what you feel is right for the audiovisual work that you're on series or film that you do? How do you have this... Um, your maybe tips and tricks for the for the craft. Well, I I shot American movies in the nineties and a bit in the in the you know beginnings of twenty first century. And what I realized very quickly is that more expensive the movie is, less freedom the director has. So I decided not to go to the big, it was the moment when I had the offers to do the big movies, high, high budget movies. And um, after my first experience with the middle budget in, uh, Secret Garden, I, I knew that more of money they give me, less, less of the freedom I have to decide how to, how to do it. And uh, the freedom for me is certainly more important than the 
um, that the money and I'm not very attracted to this very you know spectacular effect and so action kind of the cinema so in, I decided to, to 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 go into much more intimate and much more personal um, direction and when um, um, when I um, was able to 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 shoot in Europe and to do European films, I, um, Polish films or Czech films or um, the co-productions, I uh, I decided that that is my my place. That I'm you know the citizen of Europe and I'm the patriot of the European cinema. Um, at least um, this kind of the cinema which. Um, which tries to reach the audience, but at the same time is complex and not afraid to face very complicated um, issues and subjects. Uh, so most of my films, or my last films, my last films until since um, 2005 uh, are practically purely European films. Uh, but in the same time, I kept um, I kept uh, the touch with um, with American television, which I found especially in the beginning extremely in the beginning of this renaissance of the TV series of ambitious TV series, quality TV series. I found it extremely creative and you know inspiring. And I did um, some episodes or some series which um, which um, uh, taught me a lot. Not only about how to make the series or how to tell the story, you know, and and and, and how to shoot fast, uh, but also about um, about the world and about America, especially, you know, uh, two which been crucial. It was um, David Simon's um, um, uh, series, The Wire and uh, Treme. Uh, so you know, I'm very happy I did it. Um, and after I did it, sometimes when this, those series have been interesting for me. Um, even the not the, the pilot, but you know the, the recurrent season or something. Uh, and in some point, I started to be fed with that, and um, I think that the series became now much more conventional and predictable. Maybe it's too many of that, and it's not so much of the you know creativity inside. It's much more already some kind of the you know routine. Um, so I, I I don't plan to do one now, but I like very much the form of miniseries. So I'm thinking about some miniseries if possible, uh, which is like long cinema because most of my films are have the problems of being long, and um, I have to cut it, you know, to fit into the box, and I'm frustrated that I'm cutting some air. Uh, so miniseries is the form which 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 is not very long miniseries, not nine episodes, but like uh, three, four, five. Uh, so probably I will uh, I will be doing something if if you know if I will meet the right platform for that. Yeah, <clears throat> you mentioned co-productions and European um, European. The, filmmaking so uh, which you are a big part of um, how do you feel that uh, for this we also talked about this cultural identity in Europe uh, which is all, it can be national or it's all, also can be European uh, so how do you feel that institution of co-production in Europe enables uh, European uh, culture and, and national local cultures uh, in cinema uh, and how what is your experience with um, the institution of co-productions I you know I think that we are learning more and more about how to co-produce in the you know in the uh, logical and um, and um, constructive way um, and this time of Europe puddings um, is practically over. And the new generation of the producers, you have a lot of young, younger, a little older, but, you know, not very old producers who have this pan-European experience and um, uh, who are trying, you know, to, to, to making those co-productions logical. It means that they are adding uh, not only money, but also some kind of the, you know, of the of the market, but not only like the market, but also some creativity uh, and not to jump to something where it's, you know, where, where, where it's money only. Um, 
and you know it extends also the possibility to show the the movies or different territories because we have our main problem is distribution you know distribution of the european films is not growing um, it's much smaller than it was i don't know in 60s 70s 80s of last century it is um, uh, and the, the i think that the biggest challenge is how to attract you know the non domestic audience to to watch um, european cinema especially quality european cinema and of course festivals and you know and and, and different things are trend and also you know the fa awards are trying to serve it and serving to some extent but i think that the the coproduction uh, coproduction means that on in other country you have somebody who is vitally interested in the success um, of this film um, on this uh, on this territory and um, it's helping yeah <clears throat> you in europe you you successfully made many polish and czech productions uh, and also you shot in france and other countries um, that definitely makes you an, uh, not a polish or czech director but uh, a european director <laughs> how do you f- feel about the idea that uh, there should be a, a, a more um, clear path for directors to become more than a national director locked in the in the national states to become european directors for uh, in, and this step from national to 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 european or international um, well you know i think that you don't need even to think in those um, in those terms um i'm you know i'm i'm polish i am european and i'm very attached to the, the czech and slovak culture because it was where i study and where i made my fair, first really important experiences uh, political artistic uh, private and so on uh, and, but um, i i feel i'm i feel some real links uh, to france and us uh, and um, a lot of my of my movies have been co-produced by germany So yes I'm I am like international director from this point of view uh, but uh, um, I think that even if uh, I stayed in Poland I didn't emigrate because of martial law I I left Poland it means I was out of Poland when it happened I was unable to come back so I became the emigre just by the circumstances it wasn't my decision uh, and it helped me of course to you know to uh to 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 know and to to be able to work in different places mm, but even if you are shooting only in i don't know slovenia poland um, the czech republic or so uh if you are thinking about reaching if if you if you if you are if you have the language which doesn't need very complex and complicated translation which what you are telling is on some level accessible to the international audience you are international um and you know Andrzej Wajda was much more polish than any pol i know uh, in the same time he was you know his movies have been um, watched in, over the world and was understandable even if when he was talking about very polish and very you know obscure somehow in, in moments of the history uh and i think that a lot of um, a lot of of directors especially in the smaller countries uh, when they are touching the subjects which are more historical and more political they don't have this knowledge how to translate it to the universal language in the same way in the same time the romanians know how to do it it, it explains the popularity in at least festival popularity of um, um, romanian um, cinema uh but uh, but not ever you know i think this um, in smaller countries they they don't imagine that they can be not understood of course Fran- french don't imagine that they can be not understood but french culture is so well known that we know all the you know all the mm, symbols and all the you know all the all, all the all the mm, culture and the references in, uh, in French cinema they are easy to understand at least for Europeans uh, 
So uh, one question that I also have is uh, about your uh, creative process. Uh, all good films start with stories. Uh, how do you uh, uh, connect with your stories? How do you search for your stories? Um, do you have any precise uh, method or uh, it's variety of things, literature, poems, maybe something else? Well, it's very like intuitive process. And, uh, and the first part of my of my uh, filmmaking life, I was writing myself, and in the second part, I I I started to rely mostly on the screenwriters, and then quite often it was the scripts which came to me. On some, you know, already not ready completely because I we've been working after on that, but the story was there, the structure was there. Uh, and why I react to this script and not to other, you know, I even don't try to explain it to myself because it is, um, I read some story or I read something in the newspapers or I meet some human being or I read the book uh, and suddenly I start, it starts to grow in me and the first reaction is, yeah, it can be the film, but um, it's not enough to like, you know, to, to become pregnant with that. Uh, so it is the process when, you know, when somehow I'm um, infatuated by the story that in the moment when I started to dream about it, uh, it's the moment when I know that somehow I have to do it. Um, and uh, sometimes it is decision which is very difficult to explain why, you know, for example, the, my last movie, Charlatan, why I exactly, I, a lot of critics are asking me why I did it and what was, I don't know, frankly, you know, I'm just making, making up something. And um, of course, I'm intelligent enough to give the explication, you know, um, intellectual explication why it is important or something. But the real reason why I did it is somehow the mystery. And I love this, this aspect of the mystery, this aspect that, um, that it's not only a rational choice, but that it's also very much um, uh, intuish, uh, intuition, uh, intuition and somehow of the, you know, under conscious decision. So, uh, Maybe for the conclusion of our uh, really rich talk, uh, uh, maybe some message to the directors uh, how to how to uh, survive these circumstances or how uh, message to to European directors uh, for the future. Well, you know, I don't want to preach to them and uh, <laughs> I, I, I think the courage is very important, you know, in our profession altogether and especially in those times that we have to be courageous on many levels, you know, not only political, but also, you know, artistic. I think that the language of the cinema became at least uh, a bit too predictable, you know. I think that we have really to try to to push, you know, the... Uh, the limits of the of the cinematic language and um, and storytelling, uh, but political, you know, political and engage um, engaging. I think it is important as well. And the way important is not to stay in the you know this uh, safe um, European uh, comfort zone, uh, and to know that it's the world behind our you know our our, our movies. Uh, and um, and to 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 open up to others, you know, to be together. It's I think it's really important, and um, also to to be to be, you know, what is good about you know FRA is the organization of the directors, and FI is the organization of the filmmakers. So that is the platform when you um, can meet with the producers in uh, different, you know, uh, different members of the crew, distributors, um, festival selectors, and so. Uh, and I think it's a good platform because we need, you know, um, we European filmmakers, we really need uh, to find the solutions together. You know, the only directors will not survive without courageous and, you know, passionate uh, producers and distributors. So, so yeah, let's, let's do those things together as well. Anieszka, thank you for this uh, insightful talk. Um, Thank you for being our honorary chair. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope we uh, see each other in a 
without these screens and uh, drink a glass of good wine. Well, yes, yes. And I want to, <laughs> I want to tell Clem, thank you, Clement, thank you for, 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 for this conversation. I wanted just by the end to, 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 to tell one word about the women's issue. That, you know, what, of course. Is, yeah, yeah. what is really important to me and important to all of us is that the women finally broke at least the, the first the glass ceiling and that we have more and more um, important, interesting and innovative women in, in, in you know, in, in the world and European cinema. Uh, and um, I think that is the beginning of the, you know, of the, of the, of the big change. And I'm some kind of the pioneer, you know, because I'm, you know, first president of um, woman president. And uh, I just received in the Polish Film Festival in Gdynia the honorary prize for the, you know, for the ensemble of my work as a first woman uh, during the 30 or 40 years. I don't remember how many years they are giving this prize. But but in the same time, you know, we, we, we are the year when the... Um, a young woman won the Cannes Film Festival, a Venice Film Festival, and got an Oscar. So, you know, sisters, yes. I want to say to the my sisters in the first place that um, don't be afraid and you really, you, roule, how the French say. Yeah. It's really a, ch- a time of change and it's, uh, it's right that way. Um, thank you very yes. much, Agnieszka. Thank you. Thank you, Clement. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Director's Voice. If you'd like to listen to more Ferra content, you can go to our website at screendirectors.eu, our YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. This podcast is produced by Ferra. As a federation of national professional organizations, we are proud to speak for 20,000 filmmakers across Europe and beyond. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, keep enjoying the works of European screen directors.